Hey everybody, Yankee here. I'm sure a lot of you've already heard about the events that occurred in California, where a homeowner there was assaulted at his front door by would-be thieves and robbers and possibly murderers if they actually got inside his home. And he defended himself with his legally carried firearm. Well, now that that has happened, the state of California has suspended his right to carry. They su suspended his permit because police that responded felt that he took too aggressive a tone when he was talking to them. So they have removed his ability to defend himself and his family legally in the state of California because he had to defend himself and his family legally in the state of California. That just goes to show you how California, and to a lesser extent, our government in its entirety, deals with situations in this country. They punish him because he had to defend himself. I think a lot of it has to do with the police uh, feeling like, hey, what are you doing doing our job? That's our job. You're making it look like we don't protect people, which they don't. So he's absolutely, definitely showing that. You know, the whole saying goes, when seconds count, police are only minutes away. But in reality, these days, when seconds counts, the police are, you know, 45 minutes to an hour and a half away. That's usually about how long it takes them to respond. They're too busy giving out speeding tickets on the freeway. There are other citations that bring in capital for the uh, city or county or state. So they're not there to protect you. They're revenue gatherers. And when needed, they are basically... Uh, prison guards that treat everyone like a convict. They're there to make sure you behave the way you're supposed to. They're there to control your behavior and push you down if you get out of line. That's what modern policing is about. So I find this extremely frustrating that they did this. Uh, now, I'm not going to say that this is something that's likely to happen to everybody out there. Uh, I'm not one of these fear mongers that goes, see, you're going to be attacked at your front door. You better do this. You better do that. It's not very likely it's going to happen to you. This guy, I'm sure, was targeted because of what he does for a living. This, uh, What's his name? Vince Ricci. Uh, he's a very successful guy. He's very involved in the marijuana industry in California. And I'm sure because of that, these guys thought, hey, here's someone who probably has a lot of cash on hand because a lot of marijuana places are cash businesses and do a lot of cash business. They figured he also probably has drugs. We could probably get some product when we knock his uh, place over, when we rob him. And they probably thought, ah, oh, he's a pothead. Uh, so he probably not gonna put up much of a fight. And uh, they were wrong on at least that last one because this guy's from Brooklyn, he's not from California and he took care of business when they came after him. And to me, it often seems in cases like this, it's like, oh, you put people at risk. You know, you, you could hurt those bad guys. So they treat you like a criminal the second they show up. Cops start saying things like, oh, did you make sure of what was in the background before you fired back at these guys? Did you take into account you could have struck one of your neighbors? I've seen that happen in person. It's ridiculous. You're actually being actively shot at. Someone's trying to murder you. And the police show up and say, hey, when you shot back, did you take every possible precaution to make sure there weren't any collateral damage? You know, that no one was hurt. I'm like, what utter bullshit? But that happens all the time. But this is, like I said, another case of the Second Amendment saving somebody's life and the government punishing them for it. The police punishing them for it. This is the type of thing we shouldn't stand for in the Second Amendment community. It is a disgrace. It shows how backwards ass our country is sometimes. Because even people like on the internet, if you look at the things, people are like, you just started firing. What if a little kid was walking down the street? So they think a hypothetical situation that's very unlikely would it, it require him to sacrifice himself because he couldn't hypothetically put an imaginary child at risk. That's how a lot of people think. And it's stupid. It's like the same people who worry about overpenetration when they completely block out the, the fact that they're probably going to miss a few times and that's way more dangerous. 
So if you're paralyzed by the fear of overpenetration, you should be paralyzed by the fear of missing more than anything else. Because the reality is if, you, if something does overpenetrate, what's the risk of something being right behind it? And what's the chance of hurting that person? You can create all kinds of hypothetical situations why you shouldn't act. And yet that's really a bad habit to get into. It's great to know the risks, but you should definitely be able to act when needed and not be paralyzed by hypotheticals. And this whole notion that the police have of, oh, he had an aggressive posture. Well, of course he did. He's hyped up on adrenaline. He just got attacked. That should be something you should be helping with when you get there. You should be like, hey, calm down. Come on, you're safe now. You did the right thing. Instead, they often take a confrontational tone. Uh, very often, instead of de-escalating, they escalate the situation. And it appears that's what they did here, according to his account. And I have no problem believing his account. So I just wanted to point out today that not only is that, like I said, an example of how the Second Amendment does save lives every day, way more than it takes lives. There's more gun, more people saved by a gun every day than lose their life to a gun every day, especially when you take suicides out of the equation. So the Second Amendment saves lives. Getting rid of it would cost us way more lives than gun violence does. And uh, this is just an example of how backwards the police and our country's politicians are when they want to punish the victim because they defended themselves. Hey everybody, please don't forget that this is November, which means we are doing Toy Guns for Tots 2023 throughout the entire month. So if you want to help out, if you want to donate, please go over to tympistolproject.com. There's a link in the upper corner of this video. You can either donate directly or you can buy merchandise. If you donate directly for every $20 you raise for Toy Guns for Tots, you will get one entry into a drawing at the end of the fundraiser for at least one Glock Gen 5 G20. You can also get entries into the drawing by purchasing the ornament that is available over there or buying the t-shirt that says I donated to Toy Guns for Tots and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. Both of those items also come with an entry into the drawing at the end of the fundraiser. Or you can just buy some merch from the Toy Guns for Tots store and show your support for the program. All the profits do go to support Toy Guns for Tots. Also remember that we are still doing TYM Triple P, the Yankee Marshall Pistol Project. If you feel that you could benefit from it, go over to that same link up in the corner, tympistolproject.com and register. If you have no need to benefit from TYM Triple P, but you would like to support it, go on over and buy any general merchandise that is not Toy Guns for Tots merchandise, and all those proceeds will go to fund TYM Triple P. There are new designs over there all the time. I try to add at least one design every week so people have choices. So go on over, pick up some merch, and support the Yankee Marshall Posse Pistol Project. Mm -hmm.